In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this interactive team presentation where you can present your team members in a fun and cool way. Now for this tutorial, we're not using just the images, but we're going more in depth where we create a slide master. So you can easily add and replace images in this style. Now, a little bonus for this is that you can also make it interactive. So if you click on one of the persons, it will appear and you can do it in a non-linear way. So you can really make a interactive presentation about your team members. Now, if you want to save some time while making presentations, I also have fully made templates available that you can download via the link in the description below. In this tutorial, I've split up into a few parts. First, we will look at where you can find the images. Secondly, we'll look at how we can add them to a slide, but in a professional way. So we're not just adding the images, we're using the slide master, which will save you a lot of time when adding and especially replacing images. Then we will look at adding the images with a simple drag and drop features. Next, we will look at the transition part, how we can add the transitions. And then finally, we will look at how to make it interactive. So you don't have to go in a linear way, but you can use it in a interactive way. And for this tutorial, we're starting from Unsplash. Here you can find any type of image. So let's type in portrait, and this will give you a whole lot of portrait images. I'm going to go for license free and orientation landscape. So this will give you a whole selection of images that you could use. You can just click them and then download them for your presentation. I'm using those four. So if you want to use the same images, you can just type in the keywords here. And this is the second one I'm going to use, the third one, and eventually the fourth one. So I'm going to use those four images. You can download them if you want to follow along. Now I'm going to jump back into PowerPoint. And once we're into PowerPoint, we want to do it the right way. So we go to the View tab, and here we want to select Slide Master. You can choose any of the empty ones or create a new one. I'm going to remove the content that's on here. And here I want to add a placeholder. So go to Insert Placeholder, Picture, and I'm going to drag it from the corner downwards to the bottom. Hold the Control key to reduce it from both sides equally and then place it slightly to the left. I'm going to hold Control and Shift to create a copy and do that three more times. This way I have the images nicely split on the page. Select them all, go to Align and distribute horizontally. This way they are evenly spaced. So this is the first part that we want. We want the four images equally next to each other. We're going to duplicate this slide here, so you can either Control D or right-click Duplicate Layout. And then I'm going to reduce the right one to about halfway. Reduce the other one as well, until you get these assistance marks that show us it's exactly the same width. And then place it to the right. Do the same for the third one. And also place it next to each other. Same here, we want to release when we see those guidelines that show us the distance is the exact same. And then the last one, we want to make it large and release. This is the second slide. Now let's duplicate once more. Select the large one and drag it to the left this time. So it's equally sized. Select number two and open it up. And that's slide number three already. Duplicate once more and repeat that process. So this large one, we're going to make it smaller again. And then open up the third one. Duplicate one final time and make this one smaller and then increase in the last one. Now, the reason we start off by doing this in the Slide Master, you'll see why, because it's super easy to add the images now. Let's go to Close Slide Master, and this way we have a blank slide to work with. Now, if we go to New Slide, and we add the blank one, the first one, we can remove this page, the first one. So this is our starter image. Now, let's add a new slide with the large one on the left, so the first variant. Let's add second one, one more third, and then the final one. So we have all four placeholders, starting from the equally split one, the first, second, third, and fourth. Now we want to grab our images, and then we select the first slide. We grab the four images all at once from our files, and we release them on the slide. And this way they will instantly fill all four images, which is an incredible feature. Go to the second one, and repeat, just drag in the four images and they will instantly cut to the right proportion. Fourth one, just drag them in and you see the order stays exactly the same. The fourth one and then the final one, there we go. Now it's important to notice that you can choose the order in which they appear and that is by the file name that you select them on. 
So let me show real quick in a finder window. This is the first image, starts with an A, the yellow one. Then we have the pink woman. Then we have the guy. And then we have the fourth image, which is the second guy. So this is the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. If I select them all and drag them in like this, it will appear in this order. If you want to change it, for example, let's say we want the guy to appear first, we will rename it and we just add, for example, 01 up front. Let's say we then want the yellow one, we rename it to 02. Then we want the second guy, we call it 03. And then eventually the pink woman, let's call it 04 and then enter. And now I'm going to drag these in the PowerPoint. So once you're in PowerPoint again, and you just select the image and press delete or backspace, they will remove from the slide. So if I do it for the first two ones, let's do it like this. So we had originally the order yellow, pink, and then the guy, second guy. Let's now drag in the order with the renamed files. So we drag them in with 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and 0, 4, and release. And this way the guy comes first, the yellow, second guy, and then pink lady. Let's do that for the second slide. There we go. And this is how easily you can change it. That's why I like to work with the slide master and not just randomly dragging the pictures on the slide. Because if you don't want to change it afterwards, it becomes very difficult. Or it's a bit more complex, let's say. So let me remove all the images from the slide. And then repeat that process. So we have all equal images. And now what we have to do is we have to select all of the slides, go to transitions and apply morph. And this way, if we preview, we get the opening slide of the four people equally split. And once we click, it will zoom in onto the first one and open up. Click again. It will highlight the second one. Click once more for the third person and then click a final time for the fourth person. So this is the transition that we have in place. Now, if you want to add some text to the slide, that is also possible. Let's look at that. So let's go to the first one here, go to insert and add the text box. For example, we want to type in the name. I think he was called Warren. So let's call him Warren. Give it a nice font I'm using Montserrat, making it white. And if it becomes hard to read, so let's increase it, make it bold. If it becomes hard to read on one of those images, you can see the white doesn't really contrast. There's a few things you can do. You can right click format shape, go to text options, and then give it a shadow. So go to the second tab here, shadow, and then choose one of the presets. This already makes it easier to read, but if that doesn't work or if that isn't enough, you can remove the shadow and for example, use a shape fill. So we can do it with the dark and then get a nice tag on the slide. You can center it in the middle. And then there's also things you can do. For example, increase the transparency of that box and that instantly makes it look a lot nicer. You can also add some introduction text if you want below. I'm just going to use the names for this example now. Let's add a second one. And I think this one was called Attic. Reduce the box. Copy it to the fourth one. Or the third person, fourth slide. This one was called Brook. And then a final time where we have Avery. And now let's preview. And this is how you can create this really cool dynamic team slide. Whereas if you click, it will zoom in onto one person and show the name or extra text if you want. Click once more to have the second person appear with the text and so on with the third one and eventually with the fourth one. You can also loop it if you want. That is perfectly possible to go back to the initial slide. The morph transition will do its work and will work perfectly fine. Now, as a little extra bonus, you can also have it in a non-linear way. So now we start from the first slide, go to the second, third, fourth, and fifth. If you want to go, for example, make them interactive. So you click on Brook and then it instantly goes to the fourth slide. That is possible. You just select the image, go to insert, link, select this document, and then you want to select a slide. So here we can see slide number four is Brook. So we select slide number four 
And that, as soon as we click on this image, it will go directly to slide number four. We can repeat that for the others. So link. Now we're having the yellow person, so attic, which is slide number three. First one, which is Warren, that's slide number two. And then also for the fourth one, which is slide number five. Now the same happens if you, for example, do this, this to the second page. So we can link this image and make sure that it links to slide number three. Link, and this one goes to slide number four. And this one goes for slide number five. You can repeat this for the other slides, the remaining slides, if you want a complete interactive presentation. Let's preview what we have. And this is how you can make this really cool interactive team presentation, whereas if you click on one person, it will go to that person and you don't have to do it in a linear way. The morph transition really carries the presentation and then you can add some dynamic interactivity with the linking of the slides. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint, make sure to drop a follow and watch the video on the screen right now.